Hey everybody, today I want to talk about blood sugar. Of course, what I really mean when I say blood sugar is I want to talk about the glucose in our blood. So our bodies use this glucose to create a fuel called ATP, which powers our bodies to do everything from making our muscles move, to keeping our hearts beating, and to keeping our brains functioning. This blood glucose is constantly being used and replaced over and over throughout the day with that concentration kept within a really tight range in a healthy individual. Now in the case where you don't have enough glucose in the blood, this is also called hypoglycemia, what happens is the body literally powers down because it doesn't have that ATP that it needs. And so this situation of hypoglycemia can lead to coma and possibly even to death. At the other extreme, we have the scenario where there is too much glucose in the blood, and we call that hyperglycemia. Now, in the acute term, that can also cause coma, but what we really are more concerned about is the long-term chronic effect of too much glucose in the blood. And this can cause problems and complications involving your eyes, your kidneys, nerves, heart, and other systems. So diabetes is essentially a condition of poorly controlled blood glucose. And this is a problem that's affecting more and more people today. So when you go to your doctor, he might order some lab tests in order to screen you for the presence of diabetes. And the tests most commonly used are fasting blood glucose and HbA1c. So what is this mysterious HbA1c? What is it exactly measuring? Well, hemoglobin is an iron-containing component of red blood cells, and it carries the oxygen from your lungs through respiration down to all of your tissues throughout the body. Now, sugars are sticky, and they'll bind to this hemoglobin, and we call this glycation. The average red blood cell lives for about a little bit over three months. So if we were to do a lab draw that measured the percentage of red blood cells that were glycated, that would give us an indication of how much sugar that red blood cell was exposed to over that previous time span of three months. Now we consider a person to be metabolically healthy if the percentage of HbA1c is 5.5 or lower. You are considered to be pre-diabetic if your A1C percentage is between 5.5 and 6, and you are diagnosed as having diabetes if your HbA1c is over 6%. The other test that's done is called the fasting blood glucose. So this is literally like your baseline in the morning after you have spent the night using up any of the extra glucose. So this is really where your body needs to be in order to generate that ATP fuel for bodily functions. So I really want you to think about that fasting blood glucose as your safe baseline. Um, so now a healthy fasting blood glucose is one that um, is 100 or less. That's what we consider a metabolically healthy fasting blood glucose level. If you're between 100 and 125 milligrams per deciliter, that falls into that pre-diabetes category. And if you are over 125 milligrams per deciliter as your fasting blood glucose, that is considered the range of diabetes. Okay, let's say you just received your lab test results, and we'll run through an example, all right? But first, let's just discuss how much blood is in the body. The average human has about five liters of blood, and that's kind of hard to visualize, so what I've done is I've filled this big vase with five liters of water. So this is what roughly you have circulating in your blood. Now, if you were to say get a reading of 92 milligrams per milliliter for your fasting blood glucose, that means that you have 4,600 milligrams of glucose in this five liters of your blood. Now, that 4,600 milligrams is roughly equivalent to two teaspoons of sugar. So that's all that's in your blood in order to be constantly in and out to fuel that ATP need. It's just two teaspoons of sugar in the five liters. Now, it just so happens that these little sugar packets, um, you can buy that sugar in the raw. This packet is roughly two teaspoons. So I want you to imagine that that is your 92 milligrams per deciliter of sugar in five liters is that. That's all there is in your blood. So let's say now you've done your fasting labs, you want to eat something. You're really health conscious, so you might choose to eat this healthy apple. Well, how much glucose is in this apple? All right. The apple has 3,900 milligrams of glucose. 
So you guessed it, that's almost another two teaspoons. So that's almost another packet. So that apple has doubled your blood sugar, doubled. Think about that for a minute. Twice as much as your body really wants to have in order to create ATP, to fuel all of your metabolic needs. That one apple has doubled your blood glucose. So that doubled glucose, if we were to calculate back and figure out what that meant for the concentration of glucose, um, remember our baseline was 92 milligrams per deciliter. After this apple, if that glucose just stayed in our blood, then that would be more like 170 milligrams per deciliter of glucose in our blood. And if that was, for example, our daily average amount of glucose, then that would correspond to an A1C of seven. And just to compare, when we had just the single teaspoon, the fasting blood glucose of 92, that would have been an A1C of 4.8. So just going from a 92 to that 170 from the apple could potentially raise your A1C from that 4.8, which is healthy, to a seven, if that was your average. Now, have you ever gone to Starbucks and just mindlessly had, I don't know, a frappuccino or something and not really thought about the sugar in that? I know everyone worries about the calories, but right now I want you to think about the sugar. So I looked it up. A grande frappuccino has 50 grams of carbs. Now, obviously half of that is fructose and half of it is glucose because remember sucrose, which is that table sugar, is half glucose and half fructose. But that means that 50 grams of carbs is the equivalent of 25 grams of glucose. So what does 25 grams look like? That is the same thing as having 11 teaspoons of sugar, which is the equivalent of six of those packets. So that is this much sugar. It's humid in Florida. That much sugar in your blood from that frappuccino. And if we do the calculation, that comes out to a whopping 578 milligrams per deciliter. That is a far cry from that healthy 92 milligrams per deciliter. So if you're not producing enough insulin to get this glucose out of your blood, or if you have insulin resistance, that means that you are exposing your body to that toxic load of glucose. If this is a concern for you, and it should be if you have high readings, reach out to us because we're here to help. Thank you for listening.